between consenting adults, between other human beings. And uh, when I moved here, I never knew, I never, I always felt as if my freedom could never be limited. And uh, I, I knew that, uh, that poly was a thing in uh, Manch and in, in uh, New Hampshire in general. There is a, actually, I'll actually say that the poly community in uh, New Hampshire rivals the Free State Project. You can tell them about your first night here if you like. My first night? Yeah. Your interaction with me. <laughs> yeah, my first my first interaction with uh, Lauren here uh, was while she's uh, her she has her arm around uh, her boyfriend at the time, and then she's also flirting with me in front of her boyfriend at the time, <laughs> which is fascinating to do, to say the least, to, to see that happen. Cool. Yeah, um, but uh, I was actually anti poly for um, multiple months when I got here. Yeah. Uh, but eventually, I uh, decided, like, you know what? Like, you know, look, if my freedom can't be limited, why can my love be limited? And it's not. And uh, I started living a polyamorous lifestyle. I made a decision in my mind: this is who I am. I don't want to cheat on another human being uh, that I'm with. And I started living a polyamorous lifestyle. I made a lot of mistakes. I made a whole lot of mistakes okay. coming through. But who does? If you make mistakes in monogamous relationships, to say the least. Um, but uh, I've been living. Uh, I poly every lifestyle now for since April, so I'm coming up on a year now of being poly, and it's by far the best life decision I've ever made. I find more happiness in my life. Uh, the fact that I've had multiple relationships where multiple people are over supportive of me, seeing someone living your life, and uh, being able to love more than one human being. Um, but uh, that's pretty much mine in a nutshell. So I mean, I can go into detail more. But uh, what about yourself? So Rob, a uh, little background on uh, Rob and I and how we know each other and how we decided to do this is um, I have been polyamorous for about a year and a half, but that doesn't count the time that I was swinging with my partner back home. Um, and we've been together for five years. We swing. We did swinging for about two, three, uh, two or three. Um, well, let's go with the two and a half. That's, that's fair. Um, and when I got here, I still wanted to be with him, and I still loved him, but the right decision for me was moving to New Hampshire. I couldn't keep staying there, it wasn't the right thing for me, and so I said, I'm sorry, would you like to go? No? Okay, well then I'm going to go, and it would be great if you move but I still want to be with you. And so I got there, and you know, there were all these really cute libertarian males that know all these things, and they're really, yes, Colin, I see you back there, pointing to yourself. Um, and that's Colin, everybody, he's got a crush on me. Um, so anyway. He's got a crush on you, okay, he's, he's poly, but anyways. So, um, we're choking, we're choking. Okay, so anyway, the point is, is that I got here and didn't want to not be with him. I, it, I was uncomfortable thinking about him as anything more than, you know, my, or anything less than my boyfriend and, and my partner in life, my partner in crime. And we're still together, and I see other people. I solo Polly, so other than him, I don't really have... Um, very many long-term relationships. Sometimes I'll find somebody that I'm really compatible with. But solo poly is more open. It's more. It's less. Um, 
it's less like, oh, I have relationships with all these people. It's just you have different dynamics with different people. Um, I recently found a partner that I'm really comfortable with, and we decided to move in together, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but I'm kind of a wanderer, and I actually, it's even hard just being in New Hampshire all the time. I have to keep leaving, <laughs> so, because I like to be different places. So, anyway, um, the point is, is that when I met Rob, I hit on Rob, and, um, <laughs> and after that, we just kind of got talking. He was really close to the idea of Polly, and then after a while, it kinda came, he kind of came around to it. And since then, Rob and I um, have kind of been each other's uh, confidant in the whole adventure, and that's why we decided to do this together, because we've kind of helped each other through the entire process. Um, because God, like he said, there are a lot of mistakes that you make. Well, one thing that you uh, want to do if you're going to be poly, if you want to maybe uh, try this lifestyle or anything that's in your heart, is you really need a support um, community or people you can talk to. Uh, besides Lauren, there's other people I've talked to in the community. Um, you want people that you can, uh, you'll have issues, you'll have things that come up, just like in, uh, when you talk to friends about like, oh, my girlfriend's doing this, I don't know about that. You'll have other issues that come up that are specifically poly, uh, that uh, you need someone to bounce ideas off of and just uh, talk to. But one thing great about poly, is the fact that communication, communicate, you have to communicate everything. Communication, sharing Google calendars, like all, all that stuff, like that's a, a huge thing um, with communication and poly and whatnot. But another, another subject I kind of want to talk about in regards to the way poly relates to why we're talking about here at the, you know, Alt Expo and the reform and all that jazz is uh, the simple fact that... Um, emotional libertarianism. Yeah, emotional libertarianism, uh, freedom of love. It's, it's, it's a freedom-oriented idea but it just revolves love instead of uh, instead of uh, involving just you know one two people like you have emotional love emotional uh, freedom to do to be who you want to be whenever you want to be it uh, and I kind of view like marriages and stuff like that it's just you're you're holding on to that idea of the state like a lot of us here let's be honest most people here we're really volunteers we're anarchists we're not we're not status anymore. A lot of people that come here, and if you are a status or a minarchist or whatnot, I'll give you six months and then come back to me. You'll, 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 be, a, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be down the same uh, rabbit hole. And, uh, but at the same time, like for me, I used to hold on to that idea of the legitimacy of the state. I was like grasping for it, like it has to exist for some reason. I can't think of why anymore, but I'm still holding on to that idea that some reason that the state just has to be there. And uh, when you go down, but you let go and you kind of fall down the whole volunteer's anarchist route, and that's liberating. It's very, very liberating. Uh, Polly's very the same way. With Polly, you're, you're holding on to the idea that you have to be with just one person. You can only love one person. Um, that your love is limited to that, that one person. You're, it's a companionship. And don't get me wrong. I, I, I love my partner, especially, and I, I love her from the bottom of my heart. Um, but uh, at the same time, like, my love's not limited. Like, I, I can love other people, and we can love other people. Um, uh, either together or separate or whatnot. Uh, and it's that idea of letting go of that, that statism thing in uh, love, and just letting go of that and seeing where it takes you. And it's, it's very liberating, just like it is letting go of the state and believing that the state can't exist. Yeah, um, I agree with everything he just said. Um, but one of the things I want to talk to you guys about is emotional libertarianism. It's very, 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 very important. If you're going to consider poly at all, you have to develop emotional libertarianism first. Don't go into a poly relationship without it. So emotional libertarianism is the acceptance that you are responsible for your own feelings. So you are in charge of the way that you feel, not the person that is interacting with you. If I go home and Tom, my boyfriend, is just, you know, in a bad mood, putting me in a bad mood, and, and he and then later in the night he's, you know, on his phone chatting, just chatting up this girl. And I feel like crap because he made me feel bad earlier, made me feel bad. Then I go to him with, hey, you made me feel really bad earlier, and now you're paying attention to some other girl. Thanks. Instead, look, look at it this way. So he's had a bad day. He's responsible for those feelings. He's also responsible for the feelings that he has for this other girl. He's not responsible for the way that I feel. Now, if I'm in a bad mood, that's on me. 
that's my responsibility. If I don't like the mood that my apartment is bringing me, then I should leave or talk to him about it instead of blowing up at him about something he was feeling and making it worse. So all you're going to do is make it worse when you do that. Um, not to be a super relationship counselor, but really, if you're going to do polyamory at all, that's the most important thing. But I think it's good for any relationship. Um, but, you know, it's, this is something that I've been doing for a year and a half, something I'm, I'm very passionate about, and we are going to open up for questions eventually. Um, but I'm so passionate about it and so into it that I just actually just decided to start my own company revolving around polyamory. So, um, I don't know where I was going with that, but there was, there was a point to that. <laughs> but um, one of the other things I want to talk about is um, the freedom to love. So, one of the questions I asked you when you walked in was, is anybody here like, boo, polyamory? Like, polyamory is not okay. Um, as libertarians, we need to accept the idea that other people love differently. Uh, than us. Polyamory is not for other people. I would not go around and say, if you're not poly and you're doing monogamy, you're doing it wrong. Um, because you're not. You're doing it your own way and you're loving your own way. There are very few things left in our lives that we have a choice about and love is one of the few things that we have left. And even that has its limitations. Like you can't marry the two people. One of the ways that you can get around that, by the way, is corporate marriages. So you can actually get married as a corporation. Um, and sign a contract. It's not as romantic, but you can have your own separate ceremony and everything. Um, but yeah, think about corporate marriages if you're interested in that. So just so you know. Another uh, thing that uh, with uh, poly is uh, comfort. In a monotonous relationship, you have this comfort, just like you do like uh, if you're on welfare or whatnot. There's this comfort that there's this safety net. You know that oh, someone's going to get me. Someone's going to you know pick me up. You know I'm not going to. Uh, be homeless or you know, without food, you know, there's food you have this like, with the state, there's a comfort, uh, there's a safety net. And when you're in a monotonous relationship, you kind of have that safety net as well because it's it's almost built in that you can't leave exactly and that person's going to be there. Without a lot of drama, yeah. yeah. Well, you can't leave without a lot of drama. Yeah. You've got to have a whole thing that goes on. Uh, there, there's drama with poly relationships, but that's not it. But the, at, at any rate though, um, with being poly, you, you get rid of that safety net. It's gone because in a poly relationship, it's it's a voluntary, it's a voluntary agreement between two or more people, obviously, where you want to be there. And on top of that, um, they can leave at any time. You know, uh, any of my partners can leave at any time. Uh, they don't have to be with me, and vice versa. But I choose to be with them. That's that's my choice. But the, you know, if, if they gotta go, they gotta go. That's how it is. Um, but it kind of really builds, it's more liberating to know that that person's with you because they love you, not because they feel like some sort of obligation to be with you. Um, but just like how moving to a free state project is very liberating for a lot of people. When you move to New Hampshire, you're letting go of everything that your entire old life, all of it, you're dropping it, you're letting go of it, you come here to start a new life. Um, and for me, going being a power was really the same thing. I basically reinvented myself twice. I reinvented myself coming out here, and then I really discovered who I was as a human being when I got out here. Uh, so I really um, reinvented myself twice coming out here in one year. Show me your tattoo. I have, uh, I'm, I'm proud to be an influence in this. Love free in my arm. Love free. Um, and so, um, one of the things I want to talk about is um, that poly doesn't necessarily mean that you have many partners. There are many times that I only have one partner, um, and not a lot partner is Matthew, obviously, but, um, and he lives in Indiana, so I never see him. So sometimes polyamory is just the agreement that you're allowed to see other people. Rob, as far as I'm aware, at least like a, a few weeks ago when I saw him, is only seeing one person. Um, I am seeing a few, but there are many periods I go through where I'm just seeing one person, either by coincidence or because I really just enjoy it. But what's great is, is that I go into my relationship saying, look, I'm polyamorous, this is the way I am, if you can accept that, then that's the hardest thing you're going to have to accept about me, I think. Um, <laughs> at least in my opinion. Um, so, and, and I've been with a lot of monogamous people. I've been a lot with a lot of people who are not polyamorous themselves. Went over really great. 
Um, and you know, I and I think um, your partner was actually monogamous when you first were with her, right? As I which one you're talking about at the time. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I mean some like you can have some people that are uh, monopoly, or like, they just want one relationship, the other person doesn't. Yeah. At the end, at the end of the day, for me, you know, if I love my partner, I want them to be happy. You know, I want them. I, some you know, I know that I can't, uh, I can't give everything, every need that that person needs. If they need to get that need from someone else and find love elsewhere as well, then I'm happy for them. I want them to do that. You know, I want them to be happy because I want them to be happy around me. If I can't fill every need, I want them to be able to find that need elsewhere. Uh, and it makes my relationships that I have had so much more stronger and more beneficial and to where I feel this love this love because we're both we always want to be happy and we support each other from being happy. And it's a it's a great feeling to go through. Um so going back to the idea of marriage, um, one of the things a lot of people have questions about is children. Yes, and I want to open that for questions. Um, so one of the things people have a lot of questions about is children and whether you can raise children in a polyamorous relationship. Um, that is totally possible. In fact, um, the studies are actually saying that a lot of kids feel a lot more loved uh, because they have a lot more people in their lives. Um, and so it's really up to you. And it, here's the misconception about it, though, is that the, the concept that all the people in the relationship have to be involved with the children. And that's not true. Your agreement is with that individual partner. And that's what we say when we say the freedom to love. You can love different people in different ways. And I'm, there's not one partner I love in the same way as I love another um, throughout my lifetime. And so it allows you to come up with a contract with that person and say, this is you know, our relationship. These are the, the rules. I don't want to say rules, but this is our contract. If you want to be in a voluntary, mutually beneficial relationship, this is how I want to run things, and what, what do you think, and you come to an agreement, and then you go from there. And so not necessarily everybody has to be involved with the kids. They can be, and often, you know, they function as like aunts and uncles and other things. And, and it, it, it can be a very positive situation. So I just wanted to dispel that myth that you can't have kids in a polyamorous relationship. One last thing I want to say before uh, before we take questions here, because I know we're, it's a short uh, speed talk here. Um, one thing I just want to say is living in the uh, the porcupine community in uh, New Hampshire, the beauty of it is you can be whoever you want to be, you can do whatever you want to do as long as you're not violating what's not. You know, you can you can be who you want to be here. You can live the life you want to live, and people will respect you. Um, you're not, you don't have to worry about being judged by someone for being you know, poly or gay or trans or pansexual, whatever term you want to go with, it doesn't really matter. You can be who you want to be and you're not going to get discrimination from basically anyone in the community. You might get a little bit from some conservatives or whatnot, but that's, it's rare. It's really rare. It's not compared to like probably your normal life that you're in. You don't have that, uh, that, that wall and it's very liberating when you get here. Rob, the politically correct term is omnisexual. <laughs> I'm joking. So seriously, call yourself whatever you want. Um, I just call myself queer. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, do we have any questions? I'm sure we've got questions. Who's got a question? Come on, do we shut? There we go. Well, it's like, well, it as if you were about to segue into a Brett Small song. If you weren't, you need to look it up. It's called Everything Possible. Okay. Everything Possible. Oh, yeah. Cool, definitely. I'm digging it. Questions? Go ahead. I would think men would be more interested in a polyamory relationship than women. What do you find uh, male and female? I gotta tell you, I found the opposite. Um, my male partners, I, I've, I've actually met a lot of guys who thought that when I said poly, and I don't know where they got this, but they thought when I said poly meant I was gonna see them in other women. I wasn't going to see any other men, and I'm like, I like women, but I don't often have relationships with women. And sometimes it's a little more dramatic than I like. Um, so, plus the libertarian community is mostly pants anyway. 
So I don't know where they got the idea, but yeah, actually I've had a lot of men be like, I don't know about doing poly. I'm just not really into it, either with me or just in general. And they just, you'd think that men would be more into it, but actually I've, you know, I've done my fair share, and don't ever do this, don't ever talk somebody into being poly, but I've done my fair share of talking people into being poly with me, so. Yeah, I would say it's a, uh, it's a whole lot easier for a woman to be poly than a man to be poly. Because uh, for obvious reasons, um, women have a lot of market share, especially in the porcupine community compared to the, uh, the male population there. Uh, but in general, just, a lot of times uh, women that are, uh, that are uh, not poly, they want that, uh, they want that male, um, they want that male presence that's always there. And you know, uh, men usually have a higher sex drive than women from time to time, but the women that do have a higher sex drive, or just more love or whatnot, anything like that, that it's easier for them to get another partner, from my experience, um, than for me. But uh, you can always combat that, just being truthful and honest, and be who you, want, you know, be you, be who you are, never lie, You'll always be truthful, and uh, always be open. And men carry their ego down here. I can't tell you how many men that were like trying to implement a one penis policy on me, and I'm like, nope, you don't got to do Um, so. Are all poly relationships sexual? Uh, no, and that's a really good question. So not all poly relationships are sexual, um, which is his question, is are they all sexual? Um, I have many people that I have been very close with and have had um, very loving relationships with them when we don't have sex. Um, and, you know, I'll let you with your couple of minutes. Yeah, I mean, for me, relationships, especially, uh, you choose to volunteer to be around people, right? So, like, this community in general, so it's a volunteer, it's a, it's a, a voluntary community. Everyone came here, but, like, even then, you have a, uh, a group of people that you really associate with. You know, I don't believe, uh, just because you're in a family, because you were born there, that doesn't mean anything. Like I voluntarily choose to have people in my life. Uh, some of them, um, you know, I'm intimate with; others, I'm not. But that, the people that I'm not intimate with doesn't mean that doesn't negate the fact that they're not really a, you know, a partner or whatnot. You know, there's someone I'm always with and doing stuff with it. Like you can send a poly partner, or you know, being in a poly relationship. There's just not no, there isn't any uh, sexuality between it, but it still doesn't negate the fact that person's important in your life. Other question? What about just the logistics of negotiating all these things? I mean, just in a traditional relationship, that takes time, right? Yes, uh, can, uh, with the uh, green poly and whatnot, that you have to have communication. Yeah. Communication is everything. You have to lay everything out. Um, you also want to do it beforehand. Before you, it, it's hard to do if you're in a grandfather relationship or you're already in a modern relationship and you want to break out into a poly relationship. It's a hell of a lot easier just to start being poly and go from there because You've laid it all out on the table. This is this is what you know. This is how it is. This is what's going to be, and you have this full honesty and disclosure about it. And it's really easier to build poly relationships from that. Uh, but communication. Um, my, for my examples, uh, I've I know Lauren here does it as well. Uh, a big thing. Google Calendar is a lifesaver if you're going to ever be poly. Sharing Google Calendars, um, where everyone knows who's with you know if you're with another person at the same time. It's a lifesaver because you don't work, you never want to overbook. Like I live busy guy. <laughs> right? That happens. That happens, and it's really horrible because you got you got to break it off with one person, you know. Uh, but Google Calendar, you already know who everyone is, and you can't overbook. I, I totally know where it's coming from. Um, so we were for a very short period of time in the same poly circle, and so we've kind of seen very short, very short. Um, and we've kind of seen how each other operate Google Calendar wise. And I'll tell you what, Bob and I are two extremely busy people because we both do media and you know we're very active in secession stuff and all kinds of things, which is the panel tomorrow at the same time, um, which you should come to. Um, and it, it's great uh, to have Google Calendar, but I can't tell you how many times that I've clicked off of my work calendar and book somebody for a date, and I'm like, I can't go now because I, you know, I, I overbooked, and you got to be really careful. And Google Calendar is a lifesaver, but I, again, I actually have decided to go into business and create my own 
website slash application for polyamorous couples to help and aid because the biggest question is how do I keep polyamorous relationships organized? And hold on one second. And um, and so I want to answer that question. And so I'm going to go ahead and start a company and do that because I think it's important. I want to make poly easy and fun, not hectic. So. So, so I, I hate to say this, especially because I do poly too, but um, we only have a few minutes, so you guys might want to just kind of wrap up. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What time? It's like 26 or something like that. One more question. Yeah. How long lasting are polyamorous relationships? Oh, that just depends on you. Uh, like I said, I, I solo poly. Everything is totally different all the time for me. Poly relationships last just as long as a, a normal monogamous relationship. Like for me, I. Yeah, it's poly, but at the same time, my relationships are the same as if I just have multiple being relationships, multiple intimate relationships. Um, it's it's not like something. It's not like a special classification. It's just I've been in a very loving, committed relationship, just more than one. That that's to me that's breaking down as simple as it is. It's, it's basically just having more than one uh, romantic, intimate, uh, loving relationship. And it's important as a last note to know that Rob and I poly differently. And everybody's going to poly differently. And I just turned that into a verb. Um, <laughs> but uh, everybody's going to do everything differently. And it's about negotiating the contract before you get into a relationship with this person. Just like you would with a monogamous person. Only it's more important because you'll have other people and you need to sit down. And uh, honestly, I find it very helpful when the other people meet each other first. Um, so that they know what they're getting into because it really sucks when your partners don't get along. I've been there. It's really ugly. Um, so, yeah, okay. Thank you guys so much for your attention. And remember, you can love freely and you can, just as much as you can live freely.